right. I did a video on a part that was a 74C14, otherwise known as a 4106. And one of my viewers commented that they bought some 4106s online and they were fake. Um, they were just uh, uh, 74HC14s remarked. And at 7 volts, they would just blow up. And I thought, wow, they're even, they're even faking esoteric CMOS parts, right? A 4106, I mean, I don't know. This seemed kind of a weird thing to be faking. Um, so I went on to eBay and uh, I, bought, I bought 50. <laughs> um, so uh, there was a seller uh, who had 50 of them for $5.13. Now some people, some people were complaining on my fake op amp videos and stuff. Says, well, you get what you pay for, you know. Don't expect to get something for nothing, right? Well, this is actually priced correctly. Uh, you can buy brand new 4106s. Uh, they're in surface mount packages these days, but you can buy a brand new one for 11 cents, okay? So that's brand new from DigiKey, guaranteed 11 cents, right? So 50 of them uh, for a little over 10 cents, okay? It's, it, 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 it's a new price. Now, don't expect to pay new prices because you, know, you get them like this, right? They're not in an anti-static bag. Yeah, they're on a foamy, foamy thing, you know, but they're, you don't know how long they've been sitting around. So a lot of people don't understand that parts that are surplus or old stock and stuff like that, you can't, you can't pay a premium for them. You can't guarantee what type of environment they've been in. You can't guarantee if the leads are corroded. Um, you just, you, they're hard to handle because they're not in tubes. Um, so you're, you're not gonna pay top dollar for, for used parts. You just aren't even new parts that are, that are not from standard distributors. You're just not gonna pay new prices, forget it. So this is a very, I would say almost a high-end price for these parts, right? They're definitely retail. This is definitely retail pricing, okay? Now, this vendor has 19,000 positive feedbacks, 99.5% positive feedbacks, and guess what? A seller you've bought from before, okay? Now, I don't know what I bought from this guy. I, I don't know if they were ICs, I don't know if they were you know, capacitors or, uh, resistors. I don't know what I bought from him, but I've bought something from him in the past. So anyway, I thought that was interesting. So anyway, I bought 50 of them and guess what? They're fake. <laughs> and I got my money back. So I get 50 parts for free. So is that a good deal? Are these parts still valuable, right? Some people say, hey, those op amps are still good. Well, I've proved that some of those op amps are just awful. Let's see if these, if these ICs are actually awful or you can actually use them for something. And if they fail in the same way as, as uh, my viewer commented, okay? So uh, we're gonna do a couple things here. Uh, let's see, the first test that I wanna show you, um, well, shoot, I've already got this one set up, so I don't, I don't wanna tear it down. Uh, this will be a bit out of order, uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna test uh, propagation delay. Now, what propagation delay is when it goes from one inverter to the next inverter, okay? So you can kind of look at this at this diagram here, right? So I'm gonna put one logic probe on the input, one logic probe on the output, or a scope probe on the input, one scope probe on the output, and we will measure the propagation delay, how long it takes to go from the input to the output. That's prop delay, all right? And so we will turn this on, and um, this is my part over here. I have it set up to be an oscillator, so anyway, I can get an edge out of it. Um, so here's our edge, and uh, let's see, the input is, is yellow and the output is the blue, right? And so uh, from this cursor to this cursor is about 40 nanoseconds, and 40 nanoseconds meets the, uh, meets the, meets the spec here, okay? Now that part, let me see if I'm looking at the good, no, I'm look, this is a good part. So this is an actual, uh, Texas instrument part, okay? Um, oh, I'll show some pictures here. So uh, here are some pictures of the, of the part, and uh, you can see that they're laser marked. Now that's always kind of suspicious because a lot of times TA parts are not laser marked. Um, and if you take a look at the Texas, it looks nothing like Texas. It's got a big blob and you can't tell the eye. You can always, it's always a dotted eye and you, can, you can't see the dotted eye here. I'll, I'll show some other, uh, 
Texas instrument parts so you can see the markings. So anyway, the markings are, are suspect all, all, all from the, the get-go here. All right, so let's take a look at this prop delay. Okay, that's the prop delay of a good part. Got to keep this separate. That's the good part. And here is the fake part. And you say, hey, the fake part's faster. Yeah, I want that. Um, waveforms look a little bit funny, but yeah, it's faster. So what I suspect is these are 74 HC parts, probably a more modern design. And yeah, they're faster. Okay, because, you know, transistors are smaller these days and it gets faster. So yeah, so these parts win with prop delay. They're like twice as fast. Okay, um, and this is at 10 volts. VCC is at 10 volts here. Um, let's go ahead and turn it up a bit here. Let's turn up the, uh, uh, let's go up to 12 volts. That yeah, doesn't really change much. Okay, so what I want to show next is the hysteresis. These are Schmidt triggers, so we can, we can look at hysteresis. So we will look here at my oscillator and get the wire in the proto board. Sometimes the wires just don't go on the proto boards. There we go. Turn off channel two. I'll turn off my, um, I'll turn off my cursors. Let's see here, cursor off. All right, and we'll turn channel two off and we'll go to channel one and we'll go way out. And there we go. Let me go up to some reasonable value and trigger on that. All right, so um, this is the input hysteresis. So I have a capacitor and a resistor. And so it's charging up and charging down, charging up, charging down as the, as the thing flips. Okay, I showed that in the other video. Um, but what I'm interested in here is what is the hysteresis values? The hysteresis values is what is the excursion between the low trigger point and the high trigger point, all right? And I just touched the darn thing, and I should not do that. All right. All right. So uh, I have it set up here to look at the volts peak to peak, and it's about 3 volts peak to peak, okay? Um, 3.04 volts peak to peak. Now, if we read the data sheet, Uh, it says that at 10 volts VCC, we should have 2.3 volts um, of hysteresis. Well, we're at 3 volts of hysteresis, so that's, that's not right. Okay, so let's put in the uh, good part, the official part, I should say, because these parts do work. They are something. Uh, let's see here. I'll pop this one in, turn it on. Uh, here. Okay, and uh, what do we read? 2.3 volts, exactly data sheet, exactly data sheet, okay? Um, now the interesting thing of the data sheet is uh, it's 0.9 volts at five volts VCC and three and a half at 15 volts VCC, okay? So we can measure that here. We can go to uh, uh, five, oops. Uh, I don't want that back. There we go. Five volts VCC. Uh, five volts. And uh, I'll have to make this a little bit bigger so I can measure it. Uh, 0.8 volts. Okay, so this is 0.9 volts, typical. That's yeah, 0.8 volts. Okay. Um, and then it says 15 volts, we should get three and a half volts. So we'll crank this up to 15 volts. This is VCC that I'm modifying. So we're at 15 volts VCC. Let's come down so we can see it. Let's trigger on that. And we're getting uh, four volts, four volts of uh, hysteresis. It's three and a half volts on the data sheet. Okay, let's look at the odd part. Uh, we are getting 4.8, almost 4.9 volts. Yeah, 4.9 volts at uh, at 15. At 10 volts, we have uh, 3 volts, which should be 2.3. And at 5 volts, 
our hysteresis is 1.7 and it should be 0.9. Remember, we were measuring 0.8. This one's uh, 1.7. So the hysteresis is completely wrong for the data sheet, completely wrong. So um, a lot of people say, oh, those are parts that just aren't in spec and blah, 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 blah. No, these are just fake parts. These are just some Chinese 74HC part that they just relabeled, okay? And uh, I will prove that now. Um, we will go up in voltage. Let's see here. Uh, I will change the scales here. Let me turn channel two on, which is just the output of one of the things. We'll come down here. Let's see, let's trigger on. Let's go ahead and trigger on channel two. Uh, trigger on channel two, would be nicer. There we go. All right, so uh, we have a VCC of nine volts, 10 volts, 11 volts, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay, so, um, so you say, oh, see, this part's just fine. It actually is a high voltage part. It's not an HC part that would have blown up seven volts. And that's probably true. I, I, I was kind of shocked. I said, oh, these parts are good. Now the data sheet, says that uh, typical absolute maximum is 18 volts, but they're guaranteed up to 20 volts, okay? So let's take it up. Here's uh, 18 volts and something just happened. And we'll go, to, oh, 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 it just died. And if we look here, our VCC dropped to 1.2 and we're in current compliance and we're drawing half an amp, okay? Um, so the part is dead. The part is dead. So around 18 volts, the part died a terrible death, so it's definitely not good. Let's go ahead and put in a the uh, official TI part. And we'll turn this back on. We're here at 19 volts. Uh, okay, so 19 volts, uh, 20 volts, 21 volts. 22 volts. Yeah, it's working fine at 22 volts. So there's definitely some hedge in there that TI put in. So this is an official part. All right. So uh, when I saw the voltage uh, crowbar at 18 volts, I knew they were fake. Um, but they don't seem to be 74 HC parts. I would have expected those to die before, but I don't know. Uh, maybe we should put in a 74 HC part and do this test and see uh, see when it dies. Let me do that. Uh, let me bring it down to, oops. Let's see, I'll bring this down to five volts and we will go find a, um, let's see, this is the good part. All right, the bad part, I gotta put an X on because it's dead now, X. All right, let me go find an HC14. Okay, I found one here. I think it's a Fairchild part, uh, 74HC14. And uh, let me pop that in the circuit. All right. And let's um, take the trigger up down here so we can see it. All right, this is five volts, six volts, Seven volts, eight volts, nine volts, 10 volts. Uh, but a funny little glitch there, 11 volts. Yep, dead. And 12 volts, yeah, we've, we're crowbarring. All right, so there we go. Um, I don't know what these parts are. Um, my guess is that they're probably a 74HC14 of a newer fab, uh, so maybe more rugged parts, faster parts, the prop delay was a little quicker. Um, they might be able to withstand a little more voltage, um, but they're probably a Chinese design and uh, who knows, who knows? So anyway, um, there you go. Uh, I've got 50, 50 parts of dubious quality. 
Um, but maybe they would make a great experiment. Uh, let me put all the bad parts here together. Where they all have, have four, four of them here with X's on them. Um, maybe we can do some experiments with these. Um, it's a nice way to get free parts. <laughs> um, so anyway, there you go. Uh, what do we call this? A chip of the day? A fake chip of the day. There we go. Fake chip of the day. <laughs>